I was fresh out of Fleet Academy. Astro navigation and a maneuvers graduate, top 10 percentile. My mother made me promise to only take safe commissions. I told her it didn't work like that. Once we graduated, we would be offered commissions, maybe only one. I was offered one, helmsman of the Terran exploration vessel Tricard. As I boarded the Tricard from the starport station, I was expecting to see a standard navy ship following the protocols I had been drilled in for the past five years. When the airlock had finished cycling, I was greeted by Executive Officer Dallas, a woman in her late forties, with a grey silver regulation braided ponytail slouching over her shoulder, not a strand of hair out of place. She told me that the captain was eager to meet me and that he himself would conduct the tour of the ship. So we headed off to the bridge where I was greeted by the backs of every station operator and the captain's chair. Captain Derrish? The XO broke the focused, professional atmosphere. Lieutenant Hansen is here. Hansen, excellent. The neutrality of the captain's tone told me that the man was a professional. His chair turned to face me. Captain Derrish was young for a captain, late thirties with a regulation crew cut. He wore his parade uniform jacket, shirt and tie, a pair of Eva-grade combat boots, and a vintage set of tighty whities Welcome to the TAV Tricard. What is it, Dallas? Captain Derrish's eyes swung from me to the XO. Sir, Dallas nodded towards the captain. Pants. Yes, you remembered yours. Impeccable performance, Dallas. Well done. He shifted his eyes to me. Now, your pants, sir. We've had this talk, remember? The captain looked back at the XO. His forehead rippled slightly with the effort of recollection before he began, somewhat guided by the XO mouthing words at him. New crew means pants are mandatory. He lit up with a smile. Yes, I believe we had that talk after. What was her name? Corporal Sally, sir. Yes. Captain Derrish lowered his eyes and looked at his knees. Then his gaze followed his naked thighs up to the white cotton of his undergarments. I seem to have misplaced mine. He shifted his eyes up and made eye contact. Lieutenant Hansen, I snapped to attention. You will maintain eye contact when facing me for the duration of the welcoming tour. Understood? Yes, sir. Good, crisis averted. Now, this is the bridge, and as you can see, we have the latest of navigational and command-related technologies installed. The captain gestured around the bridge with a grand wave of his hand. If you would follow me... I struggled to maintain eye contact as the captain scooted his command chair, which is meant to be bolted into the deck across the still decking, towards the bridge exit by making small jumps in the seat and gripping the armrests, all the while keeping a focused connection between his eyes and mine. He showed me the quarter section for the bridge crew, the mess hall and the common rec room, without breaking eye contact or getting up from his chair. The tour was over in four hours. I unpacked my things in my room and sat down, staring at a spot on the wall. What had I gotten myself into? When the klaxon rang, calling the bridge crew on duty to muster at their stations, I headed straight for the bridge and the helms console and took my seat. The auto-docking feature had ejected us from the station and we were leisurely drifting to the system exit corridor. I couldn't see the captain. All the stations were seated in front of him, facing the view screen. A hand was placed to my left shoulder, and I turned to see the XO looking down at me with a soft smile. Then she took a step back and subsequently gave me a clear line of sight to the captain's console. Captain Derrish was seated in his chair, bent over the console, his tongue sticking out at the right side of his mouth, the tip licking the top of his lip, with a focused expression on his face. Suddenly he stopped, righted himself, spotted the tip of his tongue and tried licking the tip of his nose for thirty odd seconds. He then lifted his right hand, which was holding a black crayon, took a small bite off the crayon, and chewed softly before he placed it down, behind the console and wrote something. There! He exclaimed proudly and held up a piece of paper with what appeared to be a black crayon squiggling on it. The XO sighed and retrieved the destination order. I was quietly praying that there would be actual coordinates on the paper and that the squiggle was his signature. There wasn't. It wasn't. It was a black crayon squiggle on a piece of carton. Captain, I held up the white square. Derish looked at me, 
The subtle ability to command eye contact gave me no choice but to look back. Take us there, he said, as the crown slowly rose from behind the console, only to surrender another portion of itself to the captain's soft chewing, never breaking eye contact. You are the go-fast man, yes? My eyes briefly strayed to the XO who gave me the smallest nod in confirmation. Yes, sir. Then take us there fast. I was about to make an argument, but then it dawned on me. Arguing with Captain Derrish was like playing chess. Except, you're playing chess, he is playing checkers. Both of you are aggressively squeezing a rubber chicken, and all the pieces are raccoons who know something neither of you do, and are trying to escape the room. I sighed and pulled up the star charts, listing for the snickers around the bridge as the captain was running the traditional ritual of greeting the newcomer that every ship was bound to have. The bridge was silent as I looked at the charts and then at the squiggle. Nothing. She's an exploration vessel, I reminded myself and shifted to look at the uncharted sections within the surprisingly long range of the Tricard's engines. There it was, an unexplored nebula that faintly resembled the squiggle. I shrugged and plotted the course, bringing the destination on the main view screen for the captain to verify. Excellent, he exclaimed. Now go fast. I aligned our heading to match the course and initiated the FTL countdown. As the engines warmed up and the sublight engines accelerated us up to the takeover point, the captain put down his crayon, grabbed an invisible wheel in front of him and made the sound of an idling engine with his mouth. As the FTL engines took over, the captain tore at an imaginary gear shift while his left steel-plated boot stomped on the decking and then stomped his right foot into the decking as his idling turned into an accelerating pitch. Once he reached peak pitch, he shifted again and the pitch reset. He kept this up for the full six-hour flight. Two hours after we departed, I was relieved by an auxiliary officer to attend my mid-shift break. According to protocol, I read him into the heading and the parameters of the systems before I left the bridge. Once the door shut behind me and I was alone in the corridor, the absurdity of the situation hit me like a brick wall. I cannot report how I arrived in the mess or what I was eating. I simply cannot remember. I came to, sitting with a loaded fork hovering in front of my mouth, staring at the wall opposite me, as the XO sat down in the vacant seat, breaking my sarlang to the aforementioned wall. So, Hansen, what do you think? Well, she's fast. Exploratory vessels have priorities in engine and maneuverability. Due to previous experiences, we have no offensive capabilities. She explained casually. We sat in silence for a while, before my mind finally wrangled control of my communicative skills. The captain seems... I began, but the XO cut me off with a wave of a spoon. Insane, she stated matter-of-factly. 100% certifiable and open and shut case of crazy. Completely out of contact with reality. I nodded carefully in agreement. She leaned back. He is. The phrasing was followed by a sigh, but... Somehow he's managed to keep us in one piece during seven tours. The crew love him, and the ship is designed to make it impossible for him to break first contact protocols, in case we find someone else out there and not just remnants of defeated civilizations. She leaned forward and gestured for me to do the same. I think he has a special ability, she whispered. I hope you never get to see it. She finished and then she got up and left the mess. I returned to my console and spent the rest of the flight wondering what she had meant. Five minutes before we were scheduled to decelerate, the captain called my attention. Go fast, man. I am, sir. Full stop. Yes, sir. I began the deceleration. We would be out by five light minutes when the sublight engines took over, but that was a relatively short distance. Fuller stop. I looked at the Captain Derish, who seemed a bit flustered, and then at the XO. Emergency brake protocol, yes, sir. That was my only other option. No, Fuller, est, uh, stop, the captain yelled. I punched the red alert klaxon. Every crew member on the ship would dive into the nearest harness carrying seat and strap in. What I was about to do was dangerous. Dangerous and insane. I had only heard of the manoeuvre, never drilled it. I cut the FTL engine's fuel supply, flipped the ship so we were now heading backwards, and refed the FTL engine the rest of the fuel from the lines in a direct injection. We stopped. The captain didn't. He flew backward out of his chair and smashed against the wall at the back of the bridge. Then he slumped onto the floor and immediately clamoured to get up, stopping to shake his head as he was prone on all fours. 
If it hadn't been for the inertial dampeners, he would have vanished from existence. Excellent stopping, commendations to you, Hansen. He muttered through the blood that dripped from his nose. What does the wavy line machine say? He crawled over to his chair and climbed into it over the back rest. Unknown ship, 20 light minutes out. They're facing our arrival point. Their weapon systems are live, sir. The sensor operator reported in. They are turning. Somewhere in the back of my mind, I realized I was about to have a really bad day. Dodge roll, the captain shouted. I punched the sublight engines and rolled the ship over the port flank. Flip. I cut the engines and repeated the flip maneuver, then reignited them. This one I had practiced. Dodge roll. I rolled us over the starboard flank as a screen materialized on my display, comfortably placed in an inconspicuous corner. It showed the captain from a top-down view, finishing a starboard dodge roll behind the command console. He looked up at the view screen. Somersault. I double flipped the ship, landing on the escape heading. We needed time for the FTO engines to cool down, and more time than usual due to my stopping manoeuvre. The captain did a rollover that ended with him sitting on his butt. Reverse hand flip. I did a half flip four over aft until the bow was pointing towards our previous below orientation. Had the braking thrusters made the ship do a small jump, and then finished the flip. On the screen, the captain was standing with his head between his knees, clasping his buttocks. Go, go, Captain Anal Glands! He shouted. The point defense operator ejected a handful of the aft phosphorus flares. Pirouette! I lifted the bow to point to our previous up and spun the ship. The captain was spinning, arms flailing wildly. And now le grand finale! I halted the spin so we had the belly of the facing alien vessel, and the point defense operator ejected a full volley of the bow-mounted flares. The captain stood on his toes, his back arcing back, arms extended above his head in what I can only describe as the final salute of a female gymnast, complete with the bent wrists and the flared fingers. He was panting heavily as a sweat drew lines across his crayon-stained upper lip. I carefully glanced around the bridge as I tried to flex my cramping hands, the few staff of the turn exploration vehicle, three cars short of a full deck, that weren't suffering from vertigo, and subsequently utilizing the sick bags, were staring at the view screens. I joined them. The alien vessel had stopped rotating towards us, it was just sitting there, doing nothing. Shortly thereafter, it slowly turned its aft towards us and jumped out of the system. Nothing? The disappointed voice of the captain rang out across the bridge. Not even an applause? That was a 10 out of 10 performance. Flawless execution. He walked over towards my station. The video feed on my display disappeared. He stopped just before he reached my chair. I turned to face him. Thank you for the dance, my dear. It was a spectacle for the ages, he said, as he bowed to me with a flamboyant hand gesture. I, uh... My pleasure, Captain. Then he returned to his seat, secured his harness, stride his face off with a cloth napkin from his chest pocket, and popped the last bit of the black crayon into his mouth. Chewed once, then spat it out on the floor with a disgusted look on his face. This is not licorice. He scowled before picking up a yellow crayon from the console and nibbling at it. Better. He nodded once, popped the crayon in his mouth, chewed it with a pleased expression, and leaned back in the chair. Helm, take us home, the XO said, as the captain nodded off to sleep. So here is my question. What the hell do I write in the after-action report?